examples of it. It doesn't look good, especially when you change a tune on the voting. I call Andrew Fulham. Thank you, Madam Chair. I apologise to my senior colleague. Um, look, I just want to respond to uh, Minister Farfoy for a moment because uh, I think we've been reasonably clear, uh, in fact, in fact, very clear this afternoon about what our position is. Uh, our position is we support the overall intent of the legislation. We, report the le we, we support the legislation as it was drafted by the previous national government. What we don't support is the changes that have been made to the legislation uh, since the new government's come in. We, we will support the bill because we do think that it is overall a worthy piece of legislation, uh, but we don't support uh, some of the aspects around it that don't, uh, don't uh, provide for democratic oversight of decisions made by the Commerce Commission. Uh, and that leads me to my point uh, that I want to make to begin with, because in my previous contribution I spoke uh, largely around petrol tax and I guess the, the, the reason that the government's brought this legislation uh, to the House uh, this afternoon. Uh, but uh, just at the end of my last contribution, I was making a point around, um, in support of Brett Hudson's SOP, around why we should require uh, the Commerce Commission to come to, uh, come to the Minister and seek his approval uh, before uh, they go off and do their market study. And I pointed to uh, uh, it's, uh, 51C of, of the, sorry, 51E uh, of the bill, uh, which is that a minister must respond to a competition report. So the bill as it stands already acknowledges that the minister plays a fundamental role in this process, that the Commerce Commission has to come back with their report, hand it to the minister, and the minister has to respond. All we're asking is that that process is, I guess, front-loaded, where the Commerce Commission has to come to the Minister to begin with to seek his approval uh, to go off and do a market study. Uh, and that leads me to a couple of questions I have uh, for the Minister. Again, he's been very good at asking, answering our questions this afternoon. The first one is, and particularly where the Commerce Commission has gone off and decided that they want to hold these market studies uh, themselves, will the Minister or will the Commerce Commission put a limit on time? Because as we've heard from the Prime Minister recently in relation to petrol tax, this is an urgent issue, apparently. This is an urgent issue. Well, our concern on this side of the House is that all they're doing is kicking it down the road, that these market studies could take a year, two years, three years or more, and all the government will have to do during that time is say, oh, yes, we're holding a review. We've got this market study. The Commerce Commission is looking into it. And it won't actually report back until potentially uh, the next term of government. The second question I have for the Minister is in relation to scope. Uh, and again, I'll use, uh, I'll use petrol as an example. Uh, if the government uh, pushes ahead with their plan for a market study on petrol, which I think is, is not a silly idea, but if they do do that, will they put a limit on the scope of that inquiry uh, to certain players in the industry? Because um, what we're worried about is, is some of those smaller businesses, particularly stations, and let's be fair, individual petrol stations don't really have a lot of uh, say over what the price of petrol is, will the Commerce Commission start knocking on the door of the Allenton gas station in Ashburton and saying, you know, you need to turn over all of your records, you need to turn over your books, tell us what your business is, tell us what your margin is, uh, because that would be quite a frightening experience for a lot, of, a lot of small business owners. Exactly the same goes for the dairy industry. And I know Mr Jones, or Minister Jones across, has had a lot of words to say about Fonterra, which is fair enough, uh, he's entitled to those views. But our concern is if he wants to go off and make those statements about the dairy industry, that might force the Commerce Commission into undertaking a study into the dairy industry. Ah, and, and if there was going to be one of those studies, what would be the parameters on that? Would it be a focus on Fonterra? Would it be a focus on farmers? Would you have the Commerce Commission turning up to dairy farms and saying, turn over your records? Would it be the Commerce Commission turning up to your corner dairy and saying, Turn over your records. We want to know what your margin is on a litre of blue top milk. I also have another very uh, brief question to ask the Minister, which is just in relation to uh, 51C, uh, of, uh, which relates to consultation on a draft competition report. Uh, in point two, it says that in preparing its final report, the, competition, the, the Commission rather, must have regard to any comments received on the final draft. My question to him is, uh, when, it, when it says must have regard for, uh, what does that mean in terms of if there are factual inaccuracies uh, in, uh, in the report? Must have regard can mean, oh yes, we'll have listened to you, uh, but we don't, really, we don't really care what you have to say. Uh, my final point uh, in this uh, five minute address, uh, Madam Chair, uh, is just, I guess, the, the overall signal that this legislation, sing, uh, that, that this, uh, legislation sends. Uh, Shane Jones, again, has made lots of comments about Fonterra. He's made lots of comments about supermarkets. 
just this afternoon he's been making all sorts of comments about banks. Is this going to be a vehicle for Shane Jones and the Minister to go off? I call Kitty Tupperwellen. I move that the question be now put. I think we've got room for one more. Call oh, thank you, Madam Chair. I want to talk principally about the reporting.